Long time no see everyone, it's your old mate Chicagon back at it again, this time with something a little bit different, a variation you may say, from the regular types of videos that I do day to day. So you're wondering, wow, you're standing in this brand new grotto, well, besides that, let me tell you about five brands that aren't Yoji Yamamoto. <laughs> As always, if you're enjoying the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Comments are also very, very much appreciated. So today, a non-Yoji focused video. Heresy, you may say. What has happened? Well, you know what they say, new grotto, new motto, and this place really needs like 200% more water around me to make it a grotto hut. So I'll probably stop saying grotto from now on because that word has lost all meaning. Grotto. So yeah, five brands that are not Yoji Yamamoto. So on my adventures in Japanese marketplace searching, I have come across a thing that I wasn't really familiar with, which I think I'd call it keyword hijacking. I'm not sure if that's the official term, but basically it's when you post an item, say for example, I'm posting a Yoji piece and I want it to get more exposure. And so then in the description, I put things of like similar or adjacent brands. And we'll just put in, for example, like Comme de Garçon or Nude by Masahiko Maruyama, things like that. And I noticed that quite a bit on Japanese marketplaces. And I guess it's so smaller labels do get a bit more exposure, hanging on the coattails of people searching for more popular, well-known labels. So that can be really, really tiresome when you're looking for a very specific thing, but we're not going to talk about that. We're actually going to focus on the positives because it has led me to find brands that I never would have otherwise. And in retrospect, I really like that because they have become some labels and designers that I really, really do enjoy looking at their pieces, even though I may not own any or may never own any. It's still a lot of fun to check out their pieces and what comes out. And if they do do runways, do runways, watch runways. So here are five Japanese brands, labels, designers that you may not have heard about that I definitely recommend you check out. So to start off with, we have Monkey Time. So Monkey Time is described by Hypebeast as, and let me just quote off Hypebeast, a private contemporary sub-label for United Arrows Imprint Beauty and Youth. The brand has a mixture of street and traditional design elements which represent the juxtaposition of high and low fashion. Now, it being a sub-label for what is already seemingly a sub-label is really confusing to me, but I'm not really here to talk about that, so let's talk about Monkey Time. Now, they offer a lot of oversized silhouettes. It's very, very streetwear focused, but it has that Japanese vibe to it of like oversized cuts and interesting fabrics. The price range is, I guess, brand new. It can range anything from like $100 to $300, uh, I guess, AUD. But that can definitely change if you are looking for something secondhand, where I found a lot of pieces sub 100. So it's a very, very good entry point into that kind of Japanese style if you are looking to get further into it or even just dip your toes in. I find that Monkey Time offer very interesting silhouettes and cuts for a very decent price. And it's pretty good, you know, they're great clothes for layering and nothing is too statementy. So you can pick up a few Monkey Time pieces and they'll go with really whatever because the colors are a lot more muted if they are colored. And it's just never really drawing too much attention to yourself, which is not something everyone wants to do. But with Monkey Time, I think you are in a pretty safe space when it's looking to, you know, take on some new styles and new vibes. So I really, really do rate them. I only have one Monkey Time piece in my wardrobe. It is a vest. It's good to just have like a tactical vest in your wardrobe, I think, just in case you might need it. It's good for like layering in warmer weather too. They've also got a few collaborations under their belt with labels such as Champion, ASICS, Alpha Industries. I never really understand how these kind of things happen in the fashion world, especially between brands like this, but it's yielded some interesting clothes. And I guess if they're your vibe, then they're your vibe. But it's always interesting to see what is going to come over on the horizon if they have already collaborated with these kinds of labels in the past. So yeah, Monkey Time is a really, really great place to start if you're looking to get 
into the Japanese fashion or streetwear kind of realm. And you definitely won't be breaking the bank, especially if you're looking at things secondhand on the Japanese marketplaces. Like you will find some great deals there. So definitely have a look if that interests you. Okay, next up we have Irenisa. So Irenisa is a relatively new label based out of Tokyo that started with their Fall Winter 20 collection. And they're helmed by the duo of Yu Kobayashi, who used to be a pattern maker at Yoji Yamamoto. Now, I promise you, I did not know that until I did some further research here. That is just a happy coincidence, okay? A happy coincidence. And Yuji Abe, who worked on planning, design, and support at a label called Support Surfers, who is helmed by Noria Surikabe since 2002. So it's been around for quite a bit. So I'm going to quote off the Iranisa website here, their little write-up about themselves. So it goes like this. Chic with sarcasm. Iranisa starts with its 2021 fall winter collection. Inspired by sarcastic and paradoxical subtleties as it portrays traditional ideas behind clothing with a playfulness unbound by traditional concepts. New garments combining craftsmanship with three-dimensional design while remaining familiar to the basics, thus incorporating the opportunity of transforming the appearance of what is ordinary. The underlying proposal being clothes that can last a long time, although being somewhat unfinished in their completion. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty smooth brain, so a lot of this just goes over my head. However, there is a piece from their first collection that is what initially caught my eye, and that is, it's a setup, I guess. A setup in Japan is just basically, you know, like top bottom, usually blazer pants, but this one is like a top and pants combination. Sorry, I mean the SS21 collection. And basically it's this doctor's style top where the front kind of like comes over the center and like clasps along the shoulder and has some buttons down the side and the sleeves come halfway down your forearm. It looks very, very oversized and it's paired together with a pair of wide trousers that don't just have a regular waist, but it has like a second waist above it. On the front, it just looks like two buttons stacked, but on the back, it's like a regular waist with the belt loops, but then a sort of like paper baggy extra on top, except it's not completely spilling out. It's really interesting. Like you can see in like the images here, how it does look. And I really, really like the waist tabs they have on them too. Now the waistband is really, really interesting on those pants, but I guess like when you pair it with the top, you never really see it. So you'd have to tuck it in but it's a really cool little detail nonetheless. So this two piece really caught my eye and afterwards I decided to check out the website to see what else they offered. And it's just a lot of wide silhouettes, really, really nice tailoring. Everything looks very, very, very premium and just well-made everything. I don't know, I wonder whether it'd fit me just cause the sizing looks big on the models with the models, you know, tall and skinny, so. But it never feels like their silhouettes and pieces have a lot going on, or I guess too much going on. They feel quite simple and, you know, what you see is what you get there. And even looking forward at more recent seasons, it's interesting to see that they still have features like the little waist tabs on the side of the hips and tucks at the front of the pants. So even though they're quite early since their inception, they do have a very strong design language that I hope continues going forward. So with a premium look, I guess we also do have a premium pricing. We're looking at about $500 plus for entry-level pieces from this label, which does put it out of reach for a lot of people. And I find it a bit difficult to justify spending that much, especially when I can't actually go and look at the clothes and feel the clothes. There's no frame of reference to them, if that makes sense. Like I can't go experience something that they've got here in Australia, so it's hard to then buy into that. They're only stocked in Japan itself, around the country, and the only overseas place is Graflayer in Hong Kong, but neither of those places are very accessible to me, so I do hope that next time I am in Japan, I will be able to check out Iranissa pieces IRL and actually experience them because, yeah, as, as we should all know by now, IRL and pictures URL are not the same. So I look forward to it and I'm hoping it does live up to what they look like because they just look like really amazing pieces. And maybe one day you'll see me in this sort of doctor nursey two piece set. I think it looks awesome, but I also don't want to be mistakenly 
approached as something that I'm not. I think I'm thinking too much about this. All right, label number three, we have Dulcamara. So if 2022 fashion trends, or I guess if men's fashion trends we're looking at here, were anything to go by, then the Tsuno bag was a pretty big one. Seen all over the place on most menswear fits all over social media. These bags are interesting in a sense that they don't have a loop to put over your shoulder or like wrap around your body. Instead, it's like two separate pieces of fabric attached to the body of the bag, which you then tie yourself to wherever you want to adjust the fit how you'd like it to your body. Now in Japanese, looking up what Tsuno means, I could only really find a definition for like horns or antlers. So maybe that's like the two pieces of fabric that you tie together because separately, maybe they look like horns. Otherwise, I'm not too sure. If anyone knows, please let me know because I don't know. So whilst looking on the marketplaces, I did see a few of these bags and noticed that they were all from the same brand. So I looked further into that brand, noting that they were Dulcamara. They initially did catch my eye, but I'm not really interested in those bags specifically, but I did notice the brand that was making them was Dulcamara. So I did look further into it and was pleasantly surprised. So Dulcamara was started by Naoko Yoda in 2003 after they finished their studies at Tokyo's Bunker Fashion College. They then returned to Kobe to start the label there. So doing some further research about the brand, I found that they were named after Paul Klee's painting, Insula Dulcamara. And Naoko was inspired to use it as the word Dulcamara is a mix of two Latin words, dulcis, which is sweet, and amaris, which is bitter, which is pretty cool. And then the description goes a little bit further to say, and bear with me, this is from machine translation. Whether it's women or men, children or adults, luxury or rags, good things are good and bad things are bad. And that is, I guess, the ethos and mantra of Dulcamara, the label as a whole. So the Tsuno bag, which I mentioned before, is actually part of a series of clothes they produce, which are called Yosoiki. And this translates to going out or one's best clothes. So they're basically clothes that will always look nice, regardless of what kind of vibe you're going out for. And they're to be used in an everyday basis. They promote it as items that have a unique atmosphere from suits to dresses, bags and belts. So I don't know, it's, it's, it's been cool doing this research and finding out, you know, the intentions and why labels and are getting those names from the designers. It's cool. I don't know. It, it's been fun learning about this. So Dulcamara has a lot of very wide oversized silhouettes, very, very Japanese style, a lot of blazers and coats. They're commonly produced each season. And actually I did want to note that the Tsuno bag that I've been talking about this entire time they don't actually call it a Tsuno bag. They call it a Yosoiki tote bag. So it's like an everyday tote bag. I haven't really been able to find much in Japan or at least on the marketplaces just typing in Tsuno bag. It doesn't really come up with anything. So I'm not sure how these are defined, this type of bag over there. But I know that in the West, everyone just calls them Tsuno bags. I don't know who started that trend. Or again, maybe I'm wrong. I just don't know. So if I had to try and define the clothes that Dulcamara produce, I'd say it's a more affordable Iranissa. Their prices are not that high compared to Iranissa, especially to start off with. So I would say, you know, in between Monkey Time and Iranissa, you'd have like Dulcamara in terms of pricing, but it is also, you know, providing you some silhouettes and like feelings less streetwear and more going towards like elevated, a bit more, I don't know, formal wear, blazers, trousers. I'm not sure what to call that, but definitely not streetwear. I did pick up a blazer of theirs last winter and I really, really like it. It's very light, oversized, and it's lined as well. So it's great on my skin. And the oversized factor means you can wear like a sweater or a hoodie underneath it just fine. And I'm actually really, really stoked with it. I look forward to styling it more as the weather gets colder at the moment. I'm still just like, <sighs> I keep taking breaks of this video because it's, it's hot. So yeah, Dulcamara definitely worth a look if you're very into oversized silhouettes, muted colors. And again, though, like Irenissa, I can't actively go check out any of the clothes in person. I did pick up that blazer because the sizing fit and it looked nice and the price was very, very good. But I would love to see some more in person. So whenever this Japan trips happens, I will definitely be there to check those clothes out IRL. All right, onto our second last label for today, we have Unreal Age. So a combination of the words real, 
Unreal and Age, or would you say it's a portmanteau? I'm not sure. But regardless, Unreal Age is a label that was created in 2003 by Kunihiko Morinara, a graduate of the Vantan Design Institute in Tokyo. They follow a mantra of God is in the details. So each season has a very, very distinct focus on the fabrics, the pattern making, the technology of how everything is produced as well. And even like the fastenings are themed season to season. Like on their website, they even show that each season specifically has certain designed buttons that are unique to that season, which I think is really, really cool. It can be hard to describe what kind of things they produce because each season is quite different to the others. There's a lot more information about this brand that I found online, especially off their website. So it might be worth doing a separate video focusing on them, but it looks like there's different sort of eras that they've focused on specific things within each era to help define the kind of pieces and themes that they have been following. Some seasons focus on things like shadows or some on reflections. You never really know what you're gonna expect, but you're always gonna get some interesting shapes and cuts that, I don't know, for me, I'd never really seen these kind of things before. There's items like the ball shirt and the octahedron shirt that when I saw them, I was like, that's, that's odd. <laughs> And also like, I wonder how that looks like on body because it looks like it's supposed to be wrapped around some sort of shape, not a person, but still really, really cool to look at. I used to own a wool long sleeve of theirs that had like these sweeping diagonal cuts along. And it was that the whole piece was like a long piece of fabric that wrapped around itself, even like the sleeves. It was really, really cool. It just sucked that wool is just not agreeable to my skin, but really, really like intricately designed and made piece. They also have a collection where they scaled up a lot of just like regular items like sweatshirts and pants. So they all look, it's not that they're oversized, it's they look like they've just been enhanced. It's, it's hard to say, but actually a really good example is they had a Porto Yoshida bag, you know, those like small shoulder bags. Actually, I'll just go grab one. So a really good example is that they had a collaboration with Porto Yoshida. So say this is a pretty standard Porto Yoshida bag. It just, you know, goes over the shoulder, but Unrelage enhanced it by, I don't know, a few hundred percent. So it's this huge bag that looks like it's supposed to be like a little waist bag, but you wear it over your shoulder, but it's giant. It's larger than a backpack, like almost to the size of one of those North Face huge bags. It's that kind of vibe that you get from this label of just, you never know what to expect and things are can go anywhere. And it's what makes it really, really exciting to always see the collections each season that get debuted and what's, what, what's gonna happen next. It's really, really fun. Their runways are also definitely worth a look. And the one that really stood out to me was the spring summer 22 runway, which they did inside of you. So this was during like lockdown times and Japan was closed. So they did a video for this, but basically it took place inside a social network within a film called Bell, which is an animation. I highly recommend it if that's your vibe. It's a gorgeous film. But basically in that movie, there is a social network called you where everyone hangs out with kind of like a, you know, like a VR chat metaverse type thing. And they do this fashion show within that world. So the show is like a mix of IRL and animated people together. And they even put outfits on characters from the film using scenes from the film but they've just changed like the outfits. It's really, really cool. And it's interesting seeing they'll like present a piece where it's like 3D model, but then it switches and it's like an actual model wearing that outfit walking down the runway. Really, really cool show. I really highly recommend looking at that one as well as other ones. They had a space themed one where they're basically walking around on the moon. Just a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And I recommend really checking out their runways for sure. I implore you to do it. I never ask much of you, but I implore you to. It's interesting though, like even if you don't like what you see, it still has elicited some sort of response from you. And I think that's the way art goes. Even if you're like, oh, I hate it. You've still had some sort of reaction. You don't nothing it. So in a way it's achieved some sort of goal. 
That's how I like to think of it, I guess. So from one unconventional label to one that's a little less unconventional, but still quite bizarre and a lot of fun, we have our last label for the day, Duble. Created in 2012 by Masayuki Ino, who had initially cut their teeth at Mihara Yasuhiro doing footwear design and production there, Duble was created alongside a pattern maker named Takashi Murakami. Now, Takashi Murakami is a very, very famous contemporary artist, and I couldn't really find whether it's that one or it's just, you know, a happy coincidence that they just have the same name. So I'm not really going to link it to them. If someone can, you know, confirm or deny it, let me know. But yeah, it could be him, but let's not talk about him. So reading off the Business of Fashion website, Duble focuses on genderless streetwear. The Japanese brand is known for its range of deceptively classic hybrid garments and hyper casual separates treated with bright colors and unexpected fabrications like upcycled patchwork or arimatsu shibori, which is like a type of tie dyeing. Ino has said that he wants Duble to offer a feeling of strangeness in daily wear and fashion with a sense of humor and has been inspired with things as diverse as ski lodges and retro gyaru culture. So they debuted in spring summer 2013 and that same year won the Tokyo New Designer Fashion Award, then in 2017 won the Tokyo Fashion Award, and then in 2018 won the prestigious LVMH Emerging Designer Talent Award. So it's been a pretty like exponential rise for you know and Duble. So Duble pieces always seem to have something really interesting going on with them, whether it be something like chaos embroidery, where it'll look like multiple things have been embroidered on top of each other, onto things like tracksuits and jackets, to exaggerated lengths, reflective tops and bottoms. I find their work really, really fun, and it actually genuinely makes me smile when I see some of their pieces, because it, it just looks like they're having so much fun with what they're making. Fashion can feel very, very serious and everyone can, you know, feel like they're too cool, sometimes for their own good, but it can feel like, you know, like, take me seriously, I'm an artist, or I'm doing this, or, you know, this is my outfit, please take it seriously. And Duble is just like, look at how silly we can make these things. Look at this. The, you can wear this top, like, over your head and it looks like you got a face on it. Whilst that might seem really, really silly and kind of pointless, I don't know, like, it, I like it. It's fun. It's really, really fun. And that makes me really happy. One of my favorite things that they do, and they have done for the past few years, is the way that they label their items. So traditionally on a piece, you'll have just like, you know, the tag on the neck that'll have, say, the label of the clothing and maybe a size, perhaps a care tag if it's not down on the side. Whereas Duble will have the logo, but it's not just a label, it's a little pocket where inside there's basically a receipt long piece of label that explains not only the name of the piece, the season and year of the piece, style code, and also a write-up in English and in Japanese describing the piece to you as well. In addition to also like the caretake details. But I find that so interesting that instead of, I guess, needing to like find interviews or try and figure out, you know, what went into making this piece, they've written it all there. They explain it and what the piece is doing, how it's being constructed, why they've done this. And I really, really like that. It's it, it, it makes it much easier to appreciate what it is that you're engaging with, should you want to read it. And if, if the tag's too long and annoying and you don't want to just fold it up, you can just cut it off. It's got the little cut here dots on there too. But it's a really cool feature. I kind of wish more labels or designers did that because I find it difficult to get a lot out of a piece or like, you know, you see it and like, that looks really cool. But if you have the intention and what they were doing written out for you, I find that really cool. Or maybe that spoils like personal interpretation, but it's nice to have that option there should you want it. So similar to the Enrelay's shows, Dublé's shows, runways are always very, very interesting. I mean, there's one where they had a POV camera go into like a haunted house that was full of zombies and all the zombies were wearing the clothing from that season that was being shown. And the POV camera like, you know, gets chased, eventually caught by all of them. And then they do the runway in like the cafeteria part 
of the haunted mansion. <laughs> it's really, really silly. And then at the end, all the zombies attack, you know, it, it's, I don't know, a lot of fun. There's also one where they do a bunch of different models are walking through a diner and they'll go up to the counter, receive their order of food and then go all sit together at the dining tables and eat together. And then we are the world plays. It's always just really silly <laughs> and just really, really fun. And a, a special shout out though as well is that the casting for these shows is so good. There's such a diverse set of backgrounds, gender identities, body shapes and sizes that it really, really helps promote the idea that these clothes are for anyone and everyone. And for someone like myself, who is a little bit larger and it is a little bit difficult to sort of see runways and think, I can't picture myself in any of these because everyone's like tall and slender. When you see someone that kind of has a similar body type going down the runway, a runway in designer clothing, it's like, I could, I, I can actually see myself in that because I know how to look like in the end. I can't stress enough how awesome that is and how much I really appreciate that Duble does that. And I wish more and more labels, especially ones that show in the big places like Paris or Milan, London, New York, incorporate this because it really, really is, ah, it's awesome. I actually have a couple of Duple pieces in my wardrobe. I have this, I have this Omamori necklace. It's like a little good luck charm necklace that basically just says that it's not a key ring because they're not, they're supposed to be good luck charms, but it is a key ring. <laughs> oh no, it's silly. I like it though. And I also have this Polaroid t-shirt that says surprise on it. And if you take a photo of it with flash, it reveals an image of like a zombie in it. It's a, I really want to know how they made that, but it's a cool t-shirt and when I saw it, I was like, that's, I've not seen something like that before. I would love to have that in my collection. Yes, good times. Good times. All right, so that's five labels from Japan that are designers that I like that are not Yoji Yamamoto. And maybe you should check them out too in case any of them have really caught your eye. Which ones interested you? So this has been a bit of an unusual video for me to make because it's less Bomb Funk MCs straight off the top of my dome and more actual scripting, doing a bit of research. So I hope, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I, I've enjoyed making it. It just takes a bit more time, which is fine. And I've actually learned some more about the brands. Like I actually really want to look up some more about Unreal Age and also support Surface, which after looking them up, I won't spoil anything, but yeah, really, really interesting stuff. If there's any labels you'd like me to check out as well, definitely let me know in the comments below. Yeah, it's, it's all about sharing and seeing what we can do because it's great to give some people labels brands. It's really good to give things exposure that I think they deserve. I guess like Duble and Unreal Age are showing at these international fashion weeks, but I still don't know a lot of people that really talk about them or wear their clothes. So yeah, it's good to spread the word. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video a lot. Take care of yourselves, have fun, and as always, don't do anything I'd do, except try looking outside your usual aesthetics and usual, I guess, like sources of inspiration for content that maybe isn't what you'd usually wear or be into because who knows what you might find. You might find yourself inspired and it doesn't necessarily need to fit in with what you like, but it's good to keep your mind out there, checking out new things. You know how it is. All right, until next time, you'll take care. Bye-bye.